mail it out myself at my own expense. So they will be they will be able to respond by your next meeting on things discussed previously. I want to thank you for your time, and I don't want to intrude on anyone else who wants to speak. Excuse me, um, I'm recording, and I apologize for missing your portion. Thank you, Dr. Well, he's, he's concerned about okay. the taxes. And I will say, the select board does not forget about people, believe me. Oh, and we spoke, we spoke at the town meeting. We recommended against approving the huge increase to the school, and yet it got voted. And if you want to know the truth, that's what jacked up the taxes. I know why it does get voted, and I, I agree. It's not enough people are showing up. There are 83 people out there there's nothing out of 500 votes. Yes. So now, I hope this we'll town get will more. get involved. I will, I will make sure that, and on my part, as much as I can do, Good. that from now on, this won't happen. As far as I'm concerned, everything should be rolled back to what they were in 2012. There isn't a thing on that budget that can't be, to be modified. And the fact that we have a police department that runs sixty thousand dollars now, three times what it was—it's a hundred and eighty percent increase since two thousand five—is crazy for a town of seven hundred and eighty people. I'm sorry if I'm raising my voice. No, I understand, but this again was brought up in the budget, and it was reviewed, and it was passed. Well, it was be passed by you. It wasn't brought up in the, at the. I read the different. Warrant meetings and it wasn't brought up. We were, we but the annual town meeting. We went over the budget. We did. David? Well, according to what we put on the website, it was not on there. It's always on the town meeting. Who is the report? Now, it may be at the town meeting. It wasn't on your website with the reports for that town meeting. So if I'm mistaken, then it's because I did not see it there. Well, first of all, did you not say sixty thousand dollars for a police budget? Fifty nine something. Where'd you get it? It's on your sheet there. I got it. my sheet here. It says for two thousand and fifteen. All right. All right. Town meeting is the first Monday in May. Hope to see some more folks there next year. Because this tax rate is set, and I understand the matter. The matter is closed, and I understand it's closed. But the finance committee and the select board's recommendations on this budget were ignored by the majority of folks at voting at town meeting and and one of the things that was done to uh, mitigate some of the increase was absolutely no contribution was made to our capital sinking fund our, our capital stabilization fund so we basically took this year's savings for capital items and spent it on groceries spend it on current year expenses. You know, and that and that that had the effect of keeping the tax rate from going up another half a dollar. Every seventy seven thousand dollars of expenditure is a dollar on the tax rate. And the, I can't I tell you when that. the first Monday in May is, but hope to see So I understand there. And that's why we're here because we know the finance board is going to start to work and we want to be there to start uh, being a part of it. All right. It I'm sorry, took a while I for wasn't people to wake up. You arrived. Could you give me your name? Steve Ruggiero. I see. And I, uh, I, I thought so. And the whole idea is we got a town of 780 people out of 35 towns that are less than a thousand in this in this state. We have the highest tax rate. We are 49th out of th over 350 cities and towns, but 780 people. Cummington just lowered their tax rate to $13 and change. And it's the same amount of people. You tell me why a town like that can run a government and we can't. I, I can answer that. Cummington's average property valuation is much higher than Warwick's. Warwick's not a particularly wealthy community. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I can't argue with that, but I will check. You know, I, I'm assuming that you know that. But uh, even at that rate, it get, I don't believe the difference was more than like uh, $20 million in total tax. But there were more households for that amount of people than this. Well, it's an easy, easy to get number, but I, I, average parcel value. I, 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 I can get that, and I will break it down. 
But the whole idea is all these people are here because they can't afford to live in this town anymore. No, I'm not sure I can either. You know, it, it's got, then, then I just don't understand. We, the first thing I want to do is instead of just here, newsletter which gets to us a month and a half later, and I understand Pat it has nothing to do with you. You do a wonderful job with the Warwick News uh, on, online and whatnot. I know that's your husband. Your husband, right. But the newsletter that gets a month and a half later that most of the people get in the mail is three meetings past. I want to be able to, some of this money we should be able to take a fund for mailing that after each one of these meetings, we can mail it out to every resident to know what happened. Because right now, hey, even earlier than 6 o'clock, not everybody is home. Are you aware that we can't send anything out until the minutes have been approved? I don't want it to send out, be sent out by the town. I want it to send out as a, as a person like me in listening to the meeting, reporting on it. Just like the app on those reports if, on what they say. If you want to do that, that's and a different I, matter entirely. I will. Yes, Nick. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, why do you think it is that people come to a meeting like this seeing their tax bills but haven't objected at town meeting to the budget? Because the only 83 term. people come to the town meeting. 80 or 100 out of 500 something registered voters. That's a lack on our part. And the way they have to say, it's going to stop. Well, do you think something could But the whole done? idea is that, that, that you, you three people are here to, to let us know, and a mailing out to people of what the proposed tax rate and everything else would do a heck of a lot more than anything else. If, if before the tax rates were passed, it was mailed out to every citizen in this town what your expected tax rate is going to be. They would be at the meeting before it's finalized. Well, well we can do that by the before the next town meeting. And that hopefully will get the attendance up. That that budget that uh, you have there, uh, Dave, when is that made up? Well, it's... It's posted at minimum seven days before the town meeting. Why can't we get that in the mail? You know, preferably more than seven days before that. Well, what you do, I understand what you do that. get is a postcard by town. By Just law. saying there's a meeting. Saying there's a meeting. I would like to see that. Give me well, time to look at it, go over it. Not at a meeting say, there it is. This is what we got to do. Well, when, now. We, when we send you the postcard, what we're saying is this has been posted. You may go and read it at any of the posting places, or you can go by town hall and ask for a copy if you want. Or you can go that. online and you can and you can. And not everybody's online. It, well, I think David, it's responsible to make sure do you think, that every resident has it. Why do you think it is that people come at this point and say, "Hey, our taxes are too high"? Because they got a tax. They had control at the time of the town meeting? Well, part of it is due to the fact that, that we do, uh, I don't know the right term for it, but, but your first tax bill is not an actual tax bill, it's an estimate based on the prior year. And so with, with an increase in the budget, which was voted by town meeting, 10% increase to the school budget, voted at town meeting, against the recommendation of finance committee, against the recommendation of the school committee, I mean, so at the school, we the, the select board. We were actually curious about the whole thing. Yes. Yeah, I, I predicted this, actually, right. coming away. So the reason, Nick, that people are here is they just got the second half tax bill, which picked up all the increase. And so not, not only the increase wasn't even split up over two payments. It all came in the second payment, and it came out in the last week. Is that about right? You got your tax bill yes. about a week ago? Yes. Yep. So that's yeah. why we're here now. Well, it seems to me that we could give people more information at the time of the town meeting so that they're more aware of Better what's going to hit them. Nick, you I can will... take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Sure. I, well, that's... we don't really take the horse to water. We do indeed. That's what those, those postcards are about. Well, 
All right, well, that, that will take care of the town meeting. Okay, I can understand that. Town meeting can be later. We get plenty of knowledge. And if we can get that there out there to the people with the notice, we give them a real opportunity to go through it themselves, not while they're at the town meeting, say. So. Well, uh, Patricia, let me give you an example. Does the postcard say that the school district requirement request for the budget is going to cause your taxes to go up by X percent? Of course it doesn't because that's what's in the warrant. It tells you that there is a warrant and how, how much time you have to study it. But the warrant doesn't say your tax bill will go up by such and such because of the school. Yes, but we said it um, right. at the last town meeting and people ignored it. We need to be careful that we spend public resources only giving information and not trying to slam a point of view. So exactly. it would be the work of a taxpayers association or a motivated citizen to make more strident claims. It's not a strident claim, it seems to me, to, to simply tell people what their taxes are going to be. Exactly. Maybe before... If you slanted it is. Well, you know, the document... We don't need to slant it. We simply need to give it to them, don't we? Well, we're giving the it to them. They have perfect the access rate. to it anytime uh, they want it. They just choose not to read it. 1977. Um, right, and it went up to 1992. We're not talking sense here. What it seems to me two dollars is difference. that we want Over to make the previous, democracy. So this information was out there. The previous the democracy here five is not years working. before 2013. It's not because people are not, in fact, cents. getting sufficient okay, information order. to be alerted. I'm sorry. No, I, I think one person that is on. I'm uh, sorry, Madam who should Chairman, be speaking? May I have the floor for yes. a minute? Tomorrow is the 6th of, Je uh, 6th of January. My 65th birthday. And, they, and Nick will be 65. And so I brought some cupcakes for us all to take. Thank you. Welcome to Medicare. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I ten, eleven, twelve. There and are. there are how many people here? I don't know. They're wrapped around. I say the Nick gets a whole cupcake, just the same. Nick gets a whole <laughs> cupcake, and others can fight over them. Well, Does I'm going to get one cupcake, and then say it has to go to the back of the room and start okay. forward. I think okay. Can we keep on subject? Yeah. Does anyone else have Thank any? You. Input to the tax situation. Yes. Um, now it has to go to the back of the room. And however many are left, the people at the front of the room get to eat. Yes, sir. Uh, um, my name is Todd Dexter. I live on Shepherdson Road. Um, obviously, there's a lot of concern about the, the tax rate increase, as, as I also have. And we all know that it's Basically, the game is the eleven tower. Some of the things that come before the town meeting floor, I know, go through committees. There's a lot of study that goes involved in these um, decisions before they're made. But as as a taxpayer and a citizen of this town, um, I, I feel that some of these agendas, if you will, that are, are put together and, and brought to the town meeting. Um, need a little more explanation, clarification. There's a lot of professional or legal terms that you use to explain a particular warrant article, and a lot of people just raise their hands and the stuff flies through, or it may be rejected, whatever it may be. But I really feel the clarification at town meeting, I know citizens have the right to ask questions through the moderator, but it would be nice to have the committee or the person that's sponsoring a particular article or a warrant to stand before the town and explain it without people having to raise their hand and say, what does this mean? What is this line item? I understand everybody has that right, but clarification so we know what we're spending our money on. We have a school over here, an elementary school with 38 kids that is huge. We have to heat it, maintain it. We have to keep this place operational with teachers, cafeteria, office people. For 38 kids. We have a huge school budget. We have a school that has had 
multiple problems with heating systems, sprinkler systems, roofs, insulation that we've spent thousands, <coughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars on to repair. Regardless if the money comes out of the town of Warwick's budget or if it comes out of the school committee budget that we put our money into, that school down there absorbs 80% of our budget at least. This town hall has been worked on multiple times with, I don't care if it's grant money, town money, wherever it comes from. Our buildings in town are old. We are putting our money into things that I'm, I feel personally is a waste of money. The stretch grant money that we have right now at the town meeting that we had, we didn't have a list of where this money is going to be spent. My point is, maybe it's time looking at closing that school, regionalizing the kids in the north field, and utilizing that building down there for our public offices, police department, and turn this into an archive like the Historical Society. Utilize a building that's 14 years old, not 114 years old. Put our money into something that's worthwhile beside these old relics that leak air everywhere. Regardless of the furnace system that's been upgraded, the windows that have been fixed, the elevator that's been installed. We have a building down the street that's perfectly suitable for everything that we need. We have a fire department that's trying to fund itself. We have two broken down fire trucks at Brad Matthews' house. We have two fire trucks in the station that are older than hell. The town doesn't fund the fire department to save its life. The police department is well funded right now. It's time that we start looking at the way the town spends its money and where it's being spent and where we're going to get the biggest bang for our dollar. And I really feel that it's time that somebody looks into the schools, looks into our district as to how we're spending our money and where it's wisely spent. $19 and was it 92 cents? A thousand now? My paycheck didn't go up. Nobody else's paycheck in the zone has gone up. I've had to take the money from utilities, food budget, whatever it is to pay my taxes. I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. We're here now, it has to be paid. But it's time that we start looking at how our money is spent and have it spent appropriately on things that mean something to everybody. Not just a particular group, faction, whatever it is. We have a fire department. If your house were on fire tonight, the fire department could put all its efforts into it. We do not have enough capacity of water to put that fire out. There's 500 gallons on one truck, what, 750 in the Illinois? 750 and 1100. And we got two broken down trucks, and now we're waiting for Orange and Athol and Northfield to respond. You know, we, we've got to look at the resources that we have and evaluate what we have and use them wisely and spend our money in places it really needs to be spent. Our roads in town are falling apart, Northfield Road is falling apart, Wendell Road is terrible. You know, it's time to look at where the money should be spent and not just throwing it away. We gave the schools an additional $50,000 this year for computers. No, yes, four, can, we gave them 40000 well, but the budget was 400000 Right, but our share of it, our students need computers, our students need a good education. But 38 students in an elementary that has a school that has a capacity of what, 125, 130 kids at least? 200. 200. Overbuilt overspent, perfect place for our public offices, perfect place to move this town hall. You know, not a lot of people are going to agree with me because they have kids or students or teachers or people are getting paychecks out of that school, I understand. But if somebody doesn't bring it up, nothing gets done. If there's a way to study something like this, I'll volunteer to be part of it. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Good. Uh, I want to mention one thing, which is you have no idea how much effort we put into trying to get that computer situation straightened out. We couldn't. Well, I understand, uh, sir. But that's, but that's just a little My main question things. to you is uh, the time to study these things is when the budget comes up, but somehow it doesn't get studied. And the time to, stu to study these things is not when you get the tax bill. I so what we I need said to it was the 11th hour and there's nothing we can do about it now, but for future use, there is a lot of things we can do. What we need to do, I think, is improve the communication at the town meeting. And what I'd like to hear from people
people here is what more do we have to provide at the town meeting or before the town meeting to make it clear what the effect on taxes is going to be? Because then people will stand up and say, hey, I don't like this thing because it's going to affect my taxes thus, well, thus and such. And that's how it has to be. It has to be at the town meeting and in preparation of the budget for the town meeting, not now. Correct. And all I'm looking at is down the road that these things should be looked at. I understand that we need to pay our tax bills. It's already been spent. The money's already allocated. Um, town meeting is the place for these things to be discussed. But the select board and our various boards throughout town are the people that bring these things to the town meeting. Well, what would you like from us at the time of the town meeting in terms of clarification? Because we can do that. I mean, we've got it. We've got us, and we've got a finance committee, and that's our job. So, what is it that well, we maybe, have to? Maybe do? somebody from the, like I said, suggested that somebody from whatever department it may be, select board or whatever it may be, to take a warrant article and explain it to the townspeople, not just the reading of the bill, but the, the reading of the article, but to explain. This is what we're presenting it for. These are monies we have to spend because state law says so, or these are monies that are being proposed, and these are the reasons why we feel it's necessary. If we need a new police cruiser, um, I'm sure Chief Shoemaker can tell us all the reasons why he may need a replacement vehicle, or Mr. Gates with the fire department. But explain it so everybody understands it, and then be able to have a question. Not just read the article that may be explained in more than layman's terms. It might be more of a, a legal point of view or terms that not everybody understands. How many people at town meeting actually are willing to raise their hand and stand up? A lot of people are afraid to speak before their own peers. Yeah. Okay? So. I guess I'm asking if the select board can assist us with better understanding of what these articles are. I know everybody hears what you're saying, but do they really hear what you're saying? If that makes sense. Thank you. I can't help wondering if we might be well advised to schedule um, a preliminary meeting before every town meeting to go over all the articles. Would that help? Anything would help to, to clarify down the road, but I, I think that some of these places that we spend our money, um, especially the big ticket items, they, they need to be presented to the townspeople. This gentleman has if, the spreadsheet. If we have this a week before the town's meeting, people will be able to sit home with their wife, husbands, whatever, Look at it, go through it, reflect on it, and everything else, and be able to come to the uh, town meeting educated and informed, so that when they have, they'll have the questions already formed to ask these people. Well, Patricia has suggested a solution, which is excuse me. Uh, would, Patricia has suggested a solution, which is hold a uh, prior meeting at which all the um, budget <laughs> items are explained in more detail. Does that solve the problem, or do we need something no, else? No, uh, because I want to be sure it gets to every single resident. And there are time restraints for all residents. Some people work for different shifts. They work early. They, most people are out of town. You've got to drive 10 miles if you just work in that dollar orange. You know? <laughs> so they're not going to be able to make to meetings and everything. It, it's a time resource. They have kids. They take them to different things. I, I'd like to respond to Todd. I believe Todd was at the most recent town meeting. Is that right? Not uh, yes for the stretch code. Oh, okay. not for the actual town meeting this spring. It. I don't. I don't think that having an additional meeting, Patricia, would be helpful. The problem is who shows up, and that hardly anybody shows up. So to have a second meeting that doesn't even count, that's just a forerunner, I'm not sure would be that important. Um, but we were sandbagged at this meeting. There were all kinds of school employees and people with, an, with, with a strong interest in seeing a 10% school budget pass. And it, 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 for six prior budgets, 
we had hammered out agreements between departments, finance committees, selectmen, and came to the town meeting with a united approach, and we didn't have this kind of taxpayer support. And this time, we were blindsided. And the finance committee and select board recommendation not to pass a school budget of this size was uh, ignored. was ignored, and demands were made that the, the, the department's uh, request be considered and they had enough people in the room. So the, the key is that we get more people to town meeting and I have been discussing, I, I have anticipated this and I've discussed with the moderator holding our town meeting at the school, at the gymnasium, so there's plenty of room. How about on a Saturday? Mm -hmm. Some towns have done that. Yeah, I, I, we have a town bylaw that says that it's the first Monday. So it would take a bylaw change. It certainly couldn't be the next. I agree with you. I mean, I, I love Vermont's system where there's a day off from work, town meeting day. Close the bars, have town meeting all day long. It's a you know state holiday, and, and get your work done. It's a great idea. For, for the May town meeting, it's the 4th of May, Monday, the first Monday, 7 o'clock, set by our bylaws, and it, was, it would take an action of, of a town meeting to change maybe the bylaws. this is something that should be put on the warrant mm -hmm. for a change. Do you know how to put something on the warrant? Well, one way is you just ask no, the select no, I board. just mean him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true, but if you have something specific, you need to write it out and get a number of signatures Todd, out. Todd, I'll work with you. I, I, think, they, I think this board would put it on. Mr. Young can help me with that, no problem. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just I go back to some of the comments that were made about um, not having the communications um, to get the individual citizens the information, and I I have been trying to address that for um, since May um, with the recording. I think um, the audio recording does fall shy of video recording, and if and if you, even if it were taking a picture of the document and and including that in the recording. Um, one of the problems that I've run into is my technological capabilities uh, from my house as well as, it takes me about five to six hours to download that information right now. And I think there's a better way of doing it that could um, maybe either have a group that was um, invested in it um, financially as well as um, th that they personally would take the time to to get that up and running or that the town um, could look at um, doing that itself is um, recording and preparing documents so that people could go on online and look at them um, with both town meeting and select meetings. Um, and finance committee meetings too, if that were possible. Um, it, and I, I actually, I'm sounding kind of apologetic because um, I'm not, I'm not hitting my mark. I'm no, not. I, uh, I love the fact that you asked how to record them. I went on and I listened to a few of them. That's good. And I don't see that there not there shouldn't be a problem where at every town meeting, I mean. Years ago, we had like tape recorders, <laughs> you know, and you just played them back. In today's technology, it shouldn't be a problem to be able to record every meeting. Just it should be in the room, not stuff that has to be moved around or anything else. It's a, it's a simple enough solution. Yeah. And then you just upload it, download it, whatever. I don't know all those terms, but uh, there's there's plenty of other local government models it, that it, you could follow that would get it done. It, shouldn't be a cost thing to do. Not really. And, and I think um, one of the things, and the coordinator um, is right in saying he's got a lot on his plate. Um, do you want to do you want to put his time towards it? Um, and that was one of the things that stood in the way of, of doing that. Um, so the citizens' initiative, um, to me, seemed to be one way of at least getting us part of the way there to see if if there was enough interest. I, I, I thank you for being interested in it and I, I think the board um, would too because it, it gets you know more citizen participation. Um, where the board goes 
with it from here, I don't know. Um, I do know that um, I feel a little overwhelmed with, with being the lead on it, and I'd rather see the town um, take that. Do we, <clears throat> do we have a technical school? Yes. The the do they have an electronic computer? Yes. Is that something that they can revolve with? I know when my son, son was a group taking carpentry in the technical school, they would go out and run projects and build houses and everything. So I assume it's no different with any other we'll look uh, into that. thing like that. Yeah, we'll so, look into so, it. I'm and then sure. you would just have to get the equipment and they could probably set it up. I have another question. If we were to mail a copy of the, um, the war to every household, in the in the town, do you believe the town would be willing to pay the expense? It's not a cheap thing to do. Uh, I, I, I I would rather see the expense spent spent there than on some of the other things like keep patching the school up. I don't think it's an either or. Mm -hmm. It's an either and. So you would be adding to the expenses I, of the town. I tell you what, if you put this together, I'll put it together. I'll make sure the town gets it. Uh, for the next, next, when you get this budget all together for next year, I want every you, resident will get it. I want you to think carefully about that. I calculated it would cost about seven hundred dollars. I mean, after we print them, to to mail this, and I don't believe that one can go door to door. It's a big. Why not? Think think about it, Steve. What I just handed <coughs> out is last year's model. Mm -hmm. This was available for weeks prior to town meeting. Copies at the library. Copies here. Um, Online, downloadable, had plenty available to for all kinds of folks to show up at, at last year's town meeting, and I didn't recycle them. I've got a pile of them. So mm -hmm. anybody wants last year's version, and but it, uh, but it would cost I, about seven hundred dollars to do a mailing to three hundred something. I can print them. If you print them, here, I'll put, we can trade paperwork. I can handle it. I, I would be happy to, if the town um, released that to me, try and get it on the video of, of the, um, or the audio, because what I'm doing right now is I'm just videotaping one picture, and I'm putting the audio on top of that. So it is actually a video file. Um, we could do all kinds of things with the, the, the visual content of that. I I thank you. We don't need to get into the details okay. right now. Uh, you had a question, Ted. I was just going to ask if the easiest way to do this, obviously, is through email. And Dave probably has a better idea how many people subscribe to our in-town web system and minus how many households that do not. Easy way to figure how many hard copies will be necessitated to versus online access for something like this to eliminate a fair amount of that uh, posting. Yeah, Privacy right. issues being what they are, I have no idea who's on the Warwick list other than myself. Um, I do have email addresses for Warwick Broadband customers, but I would consider it sort of spam to go send them a three meg <coughs> file without invitation. So I wouldn't want to just work out. Well, it, it's definitely a uh, on the town website mm -hmm. and link on the Warwick album for sure. Link on the postcard. Uh, you? Folks, you're, you're really preaching to the choir. We are aware of this. We have been concerned about it. We were absolutely floored at the town meeting when that school item passed, in spite of our protests. We went to the school. We David and John... Um, John Bradford. John Bradford did a tremendous job of analyzing the computer facilities at the Pioneer School. The, the group sat there and just smugly listened and then said, well, we can't do that. They want the best and latest of everything, which they absolutely do not need. Um, so that was another wasted attempt. And um, furthermore, they want it in ways that make no sense. Um, we, we all went to a meeting with them, and we were so upset by that meeting that we demanded that there be another one. 
And, you know, we did what we could do. Well, then, then we demanded that, that there be an external review of, and they picked such a close insider to them to review it. Of course, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, I personally became um, so dissatisfied with the process that I very quietly ran for school committee. And I've got two school committee meetings under my belt. I've got three budget committee meetings in my calendar, and today I received notice that I'm not on the budget committee anymore. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who decided that? Uh, the chairman. Who's the chairman? Pat Shearer. Oh, she is? Yeah. But I am on the negotiations committee, which is, which is the one which that works with the unions, yeah. Yeah. and that's where the most money has been given away, yeah. is, is in the union negotiations, so all is not lost. The problem here is we've got a lot of good uses for not enough resources. Exactly. That's what we've got. Trying to, trying to run like an orange or apple, and you can't do it. Can't I can do it. promise you this. We will, I'm not sure exactly how, but we will get information out to you in advance. And while this was negative in a way, this huge increase, this is what we needed. We need interested citizens who are yeah. willing to come and participate. Um, if we had just said, oh, and we have talked about the school is too big, what would happen if we t tried to regionalize and, and we agreed that there'd be a total uproar and anarchy. But you sometimes have to go through that. Well, I change. know, and I thank you for bringing that up because this is not a new idea. I realize it's not a new idea, but it should be a renewed idea. I, we're hoping we will do that. It's wonderful to have all you people here, yes, especially is. people who are willing to open their mouths and their minds. And I appreciate it. I hope you will do more of it. And we're starting our budget process now. You can come to the meetings and, uh, you know, the Finance Committee and the Select Board will review each department's budget. You're willing, you're welcome to come to those meetings and you'll get an idea of... When's the first Finance Meeting? I'm not sure. I'll be yeah. sure to let you know. I don't, I don't know. You can let me know by email. Or if you're uh, online, you can go to the town website. Okay. Always posted. The website. Thank you. Yes, uh, there have been suggestions that Two different things happen here. One is that we change the time and date of the meeting to make it more attractive. And the second, that we somehow provide more information with respect to each warrant item, and I'm not quite sure how that would work. But what I'd like to see is if there are is a specific recommendation given to us in writing as to what those two th two kinds of changes should be, and then we can have it before us and and deal with it. Uh, I particularly like to see a a little research on what other towns do on those two items on making people understand the budget better and on setting the meeting so it's one where people can come to it and they want to come to it and etc. And I don't know what other towns do. I would like to know that and I'd like to see some hands raised out there of folks who can research those two items and bring back a specific proposal to us. To clarify, just how to get the information to the people. Uh, at, the, <coughs> at town meeting, he's talking about. Oh, are you talking just at the town orders. meetings? I'm talking about two different things. One is if we need to change the date and time of the town meeting yes. to something more attractive, what is that and how does it work and what have other towns done about it? That's one item. The other item is. What specifically do we need to do about presentation of greater detail 
at the town meeting so people understand. Well, I believe. I think we can take care of that, Nick. I think we can. We, we can't work out all the details or we'll be here all night. But suffice it to say, we'll come up with something, and I would like some of you to have time to check in with us and see what's happening, give us feedback, see if you think this is the right thing to do. We're, we're in the midst of, well, we started the budgeting process, so we're going to be ongoing with that. And uh, you can go to the public meetings. What can, kind of money is in stabilization right now? About uh, uh, $90,000. And do you have any idea what you're budgeting for this year for stabilization? Like to, like to contribute the minimum twenty five. Last year I proposed twenty five thousand. Last year I proposed forty thousand, and that was zeroed out. And and in some folks' mind, then appropriated to school operating expenses. And, and how much of that has been used in the last year towards um, reduction of the tax rate? How much stabilization? Yes. Not it's not a proper use for stabilization. Okay. It's it actually increases. An appropriation to stabilization requires a two-thirds vote, same coming out to expand, but it, but uh, it's not a lawful use to, to use stabilization to reduce the levy. Free cash, okay. the free cash is what, um, free cash is made out of revenues in excess of what we anticipated. So we thought we were going to get a dollar, and we got a dollar twenty. That twenty cents contributes to free cash. or expenditures that were authorized and didn't happen. Those two things come together, become free cash, and it's a annual bookkeeping exercise. If the town meeting doesn't act on the free cash, it disappears back into the checking account until it comes around another year. In Warwick, we have, for the last seven or eight years, appropriated all of our free cash to reducing the levy, so apl applied that revenue from last year that was the result of excess <laughs> revenues than what we budgeted or, or remainders of uh, funds. One of the things that we also do is we try to keep departments to budget very very tightly and not, not each have contingency. So we have a $20,000 reserve fund, which is a pot of money controlled by the Finance Committee for emergencies and unforeseen things and we have promised over the years to departments if you don't spend your whole budget we will not hold that over you we will not say we're cutting your budget because in government there's such a tendency to say ah spend it all spend it all or you'll lose it next year so let's just keep that in mind as we can you explain what the stabilization fund is for these people it's I don't know. it's a savings account for capital purposes. So it's, a, it's the town savings account and the town meeting controls it and um, uses that have been, that stabilization has contributed to um, highway or it's, it's so real, it can, it can it's be, stuff with elastic it values, used capital for, items. It can be used for anything except tax no, it, you, you, you can't use it, say, to uh, pay the town coordinator's salary next year. It's, it's for or capital items. Or to pay items. the electric bill. Or to pay the electric bill. But it's, it's for buying stuff with, that would, that if you're in business and the IRS would say depreciate that, Steve, you can't, you can't expense that. Okay. Those kinds of items. All right. That's what you're talking about. Some of the people don't understand, and I don't know why. Particular yeah, we're full of jargon and it rolls off my lips. Mm -hmm. Jim Shoemaker, did you have a question? No, I just wanted to make a point that on, on the town meeting floor, I don't know how many people were here, but David did speak up at the time and he said that in fiscal year 16, which is the one coming up, he goes, if the tax rate goes up to $20 or so, there's going to be a taxpayer revolt. But well, he's a little early because I think this shows that the people have kind of dug in their heels and it's you know, taking control of the town. So, <coughs> Which is good. It's, it's excellent. It's a wake-up call for sure. Yeah. But he did, David, David is very prescient. He, he, he said a few things on the town meeting that actually went to, uh, you know, when the motion came for the, uh, to, to accept the full school committee, uh, or the full school budget, uh, he, he did speak on it. So. 
Well, I don't think anybody's pointing a finger to any one particular individual because of the tax rate hike, but it, it's obvious that we as citizens have not been in participation in as much as we should have the town meeting and, and voting process of, of some of these articles, but when you get railroaded by a bunch of teachers and family members, it's kind of hard to control that. You need an offsetting faction. That's but right. um, in the future, I, I think when these types of hot items come up, that those are something that needs to be broadcast to the town to the best of your ability that these particular line items are going to. And I'm not saying David or anyone else hasn't done that, but <coughs> get that out there. So hopefully you do get a better town meeting we um, were, turnout. We were pretty blindsided by that. We didn't expect that. Yeah, if there had been an expectation that we were faced with a PAC meeting, I mean, year after year after year, the same faces show up at town meeting and they follow, have followed the recommendations. Well, leadership's recommendation was not to spend this money. Nobody saw this coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing, I notice Rosa does not have the, the redemptions anymore at the town dump. Why can't the person who runs the place take them and use it for part of your mailing list money to incorporate it into the town, just like you do with recyclables on everything else? Then Talk money, to me after that class. That that you. whole that was a grandfathered situation, and it isn't a hundred percent according to Hoyle. Well, the thing is, though, it's it's still a recyclable. But the only difference is you get paid for the recyclables. We have a contract dumps. that says that all our recyclables are supposed to go to one place. But then they're only going as not exactly. returns. They're going as just recyclables. Just saying, we have a contract. That well, we can set it outside the dump. Okay, can we I'm move sorry. to the next item? Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Um, Anybody else need one of these? Just in closing on this subject, I'm really happy that you're all here. It, this is what we need. And we've been feeling that we've kind of been swimming up waterfalls anticipating of what would happen if we took some unpleasant measures. But now that we have some backing, I feel much better, and um, I think we can do something. Thank you again. I just think this trend is somehow it's got to come to a level playing field for a while because there isn't anybody in here that has a lot of extra money to continue to contribute Absolutely. to this. Absolutely. You know, we're lawfully bound, but yet, you know... We'll turn to the employer for an increase every time we need something for taxation. And, you know, or from you this don't. point going forward, participation on our part, obviously, is a, is a, a must. Yes. As a retiree, I got a $20 increase. $30 goes to taxes. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay. Minutes of motion to approve minutes of the meeting of... Of December 15th. I move that we accept the minutes of the meeting of December 15th as presented. Second. Nick was absent, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Abstain. Do we have any? I do not. Okay. Correspondence? Uh, no. The letter to FERC. That's incomplete at this time. Yeah, it's, it's on here as a perennial item, and I think, personally think that before a letter goes out now, so much has changed, there probably needs to be another joint meeting of boards. Um, it's got to be filed before the end of the month, though. This month. Is Mr. Katie out there? Okay. The subject is the, the letter to FERC. Where do you think we are on that? Do we need another meeting? Uh, I just, did you guys get the letter 
from Kinder Morgan uh, that included the map. And that almost skirts Warwick. That cuts through a corner of Warwick, yeah. And it also said if we do want information from you about this and that, and to be honest with you, I haven't looked at the letter carefully enough to figure out whether that means we need to change anything that we have written. We're gonna, I'm gonna, con I'm supposed to condense it down and get it back out again, and uh, I haven't done it yet. Okay. But you expect this will be done before the end of the month? Yeah. Okay, thank you. The Sultas Net Meter Credit Settlement Offer. Uh, may I, um, for Claire? Yeah. Uh, I think it can be a very, very short letter since most of what we were planning to do is mooted. And I think all we really need to say is that we still oppose the pipeline for reasons that are general. And spell out what those are, which include uh, natural gas not being everything it's... Uh, it's cut out to be, um, and that we need more information on effects on on Warwick because we understand there may still be effects, and that's about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some uh, the new route will go through an extremely remote area of our town that is uh, topographically challenging. The terrain is pretty tough, which I think may have some uh, emergency response concerns for our fire department or whoever does uh, the deals with uh, a gas line that blows up in town. <laughs> um, so uh, there are still some wildlife uh, issues possibly. And, but there, there's a couple, there are a few more things than that, yeah, but uh, everybody will have a chance to look at it and compare uh, the new draft to the old draft and the, whether we do it as a meeting, I can ask that as a question when I get the letter out, do you think we want another meeting or not? You know, a question I think is uh, how to approach the fact that there is actually doing something good here, and yet we don't want to take sides. Uh, the thing they're doing good is uh, deciding not to create um, a corridor through areas that haven't prior, haven't had um, prior uh, pipelines or anything else that are essentially pristine and replacing that with using existing uh, rights of way. And this is a good thing. And yet we don't want to praise the change in such a way that it looks as if we're taking um, a NIMBY approach. So I think that's a question that should be addressed to people. How do we handle that? Well, I, I'll get the letter out and people can make their comments. I think that's because uh, uh, I have been negligent in it and I apologize and we'll try and Thank you. Pay Thank you. Yes, sir. I heard that, I don't know how true it is or not, but I heard they were going to try to put a pump house up on this section up in Warwick. And they say those pump houses are extremely loud and very noisy, and I, I recommend not having it. <laughs> that is not true. The well, like there is no, there is their proposal, if you look at their... Uh, if you go to their website and look at their proposal, they have colored the quarter mile on either side of their pipeline with a different color for where they're going to put the pump uh, 
compression station. The compression station, mm -hmm. and it will be probably in Northfield someplace. Now, the lot, the pipeline runs quite close to the to to the Warwick town line, so it's going to be close. Yeah. But the place where it cuts through uh, Warwick is pretty darn inaccessible. I don't think they're going to put it there. They most likely will put it on Mary Wall's lot in Northfield where there's a, a woods road that goes right up there to the power line mm -hmm. uh, with the pipeline going right there. That's where I would suspect they put it. Uh, but that's a, that's a, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm just saying that when I look at the map, that's the first thing. But there is no plan, according to their maps, to put one in Warwick. I, I would. The select board is in receipt of a copy of a letter from Mary Wall to the pipeline company denying them access for survey. So, you know. That was actually going to be my question, and in in saying that, why should this letter change if the public safety issues still affect Warwick? If the uh, landowners don't want to grant eminent domain um, because it's in maybe a different neighborhood, you know, I think that uh, we either have the right about it outside, or do you want to take up selectman's time? Um, I was making a statement, and I made it during the selectman's meeting. Okay. Okay. Are we finished with that topic? Okay. The Sotus net meter credits are not uh, if you read my um, coordinator report on this, um, I was, was recommending that we take the $10,300 offered. Um, I'm not recommending that anymore based on the meeting I had with the Attorney General's office on Friday. The Attorney General's office would like us to not take this offer. What, what's going on here is the, if you recall, we sent a letter to the Attorney General's office and the Attorney General, about Soltus, Solar Energy Company, um, selling our power to the city of Lowell and then turning around and saying, sorry, we don't have any power for you. Uh, we'll try to find some, which they have not done. Um, I then wrote a letter, or drafted a letter to the Inspector General that was, according to our council, a little too strong. But I had circulated the letter to some other communities, and the letter was sent. And the Inspector General said, we're not going to study this. That's what they said publicly. But what they did is they went back to the Attorney General and said, you better look at this. So there are four wrong parties with the Soltis contract. Two of them are nonprofits, the YMCA and the Athol Hospital. Two of them are municipalities, Warwick and Peterson. Um, apparently, <coughs> the municipal cases are, are covered under the False Claims Act, whereas the, and I don't know why, but the, the nonprofits cases are covered under general consumer protection type clauses. Um, wrongdoing under the False Claim Act can result in not much in the way of penalties, but uh, consequential damages of up to three times. Three, three times, double or triple. I would call it damages. There. They're calling it consequential damages. Um, what the Attorney General's office has done is they have begun a civil investiga investigative demand, a CID. These are normally confidential investigatory manners in which they start sending out subpoenas to the parties to learn information. The Attorney General's office characterizes Soltis' attempt to settle with us like that as, on the one hand, uh, emboldening the Attorney General's office to continue with the investigation. Um, 
and on the other hand, a uh, very unusual act to have a public offering made by a company under investigation like this. I don't think that the select board can make a wrong decision here. I think our options are take the 10-3 or counter it. Uh, if we do, I would suggest 21,000. I spent quite a lot of time, at least five minutes, thinking about you know, why that should be. But our original deal with Soltis, or with, was with Pequog, and it was structured in a way that we would not pay transmission or distribution charges, which is a big deal on your electric bill. Half your electric bill is moving electricity around from the generator over transmission lines, over the distribution lines, into the neighborhood, and into your house. And while that was very likely a flawed contract, it's what we signed and what we expected when, when we negotiated with Hal Gillum for this deal. We thought we were going to be buying power for eight and a half cents a kilowatt hour, accruing to our meter, no cost, no other costs. So and we would be what they presented to us. Right. And it's what Soltus acquired. Now if they failed in their due diligence to pick up on the fact that this is not the way it works in this industry anymore, that was their problem, not ours. So we could take the 10-3, we could counter with like 21 which would give us $1,000, $1,200 for our legal fees that we spent examining the first deal, examining the transfer documents from our assignment of our contract from Soltus, from Pequot to Soltus, and then giving due consideration to this offer. Or we could do what the Attorney General says, which is say no. And the Attorney General further says that that while it is not in writing in the, in the settlement offer, that the intention of this is to make the Attorney General's investigation go away. go away. And the Attorney General's office says they are not going away. So even if we say yes, it probably will not get executed and we will probably not be, be paid. If the Attorney General runs with this, the most we're going to hope for, I believe, are our actual losses. Anything that's in the way of penalty or, uh, you know, oh, we're going to get single restitution. We're not going to get double, we're not going to get triple. They're, the state's going to get that portion of it. We would be made whole. Um, our counsel did, while well, he agreed with me that this was a fair offer, at least on the face of things at first, um, he also says that we really shouldn't be too concerned about what the Attorney General wants because they've got their own agenda and we should look at this from our perspective. So, having sat through that meeting with them and seeing the, the fire they have to, to run with this, I, I'd recommend at this point that, that we turn down the offer. I move that we make a counter offer of 20000 100. 20, um, we theoretically could get triple, right? Theoretically. So I would make the counter offer um, triple. So and, and that's essentially doing what the Attorney General is asking. But it's um, but it's not. Right. Uh, but that would be my suggestion. If there's a, if the attorney general is going to take all the costs of litigation, why not ask for the max? Gives us room to settle someplace in the middle if, if that ever came. To yeah, pass. they might they might settle for for twice instead of thrice. I don't see that we have anything to lose. Is that a doing motion? That. Uh, I withdraw my motion. I guess it's a, a motion, yeah, um, that we counter offer for triple. We have a second. Well, I have a second. Sure. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Employment contracts for strong fire and police chiefs. 
Alright, I'm not looking for any action today. They're not ready for it, but some weeks ago uh, Nick referred me to town council over a, a matter and town council, uh, it was a strong chief matter and town council first piece of advice is that we have both of our chiefs, because both are strong chiefs, under contract. Um, so I asked them to provide us with a contract, and I haven't done anything with it, but it includes automobiles and health insurance and a bunch of stuff. So I'll, I'll need to work with the two chiefs to get something. Um, the strong uh, fire chief currently gets a thousand a year. Fifteen hundred. I'm sorry? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Well, not too much practical difference between a thousand and fifteen hundred no, if you're looking at that yeah, list correct. of things he's obliged to do. The uh, the consultant we had pointed out there was no way anybody can really be asked to do that or be fired when what they're getting is a thousand a year and I would think the same is true of fifteen hundred so that if we're going to put demands on him for all of those things there's something pretty funny uh, I would be inclined to say and we, we're not acting on it tonight but I'd be inclined to say that he has the duty to make his best efforts given his salary to fill, fill all those obligations. Um, a flat out a flat out statement he's got to do it is saying he's got to work at under minimum wage because there's no way is, he can do it at fifteen hundred. A contract is this what's this is what we expect and this is what I'm willing to do, right? Right. So, I don't think that's an issue. We just need to come to an agreement on what the contract should say with Rohan, because obviously he's not going to sign something he doesn't approve of. Well, this is not just the fire chief. This is both exactly. both positions. Yeah. Um. Well, the fire chief is chief of a volunteer fire department, and the um, police chief is not chief of a volunteer police department. And that's the difference in my mind, that we want to but keep it a volunteer fire department, but that, you know, we have to give them some discretion. The underlying, uh, the issue, Nick, do you recall why you referred me to town council? You know what? I don't. All right, let me remind you. Okay. Mm. I learned that there's a felon serving on our fire department and made issue of Corey checks and right. you called me up and told me that if I didn't refer this to town council I would no I believe it was we would all be very sorry all right so I, re I referred it to town council and his first recommendation is that both chiefs if not under contract be placed under contract uh-huh and he's town council in ten towns, and he told me that much of what we were sold as provisions of strong chief were just not so. But that the first thing that has to happen is both chiefs, in his recommendation, is that both chiefs be put under contract. Now what those contracts are needs to be developed between the two chiefs and the select board. Yes, no. Um, I, I guess one of the questions that I had, and, and I actually reviewed the, the document from Sturbridge, um, and Ron had a couple of questions about it too. Um, did the, so there's been no contract with the fire chief that's a written contract at this point? You didn't, when you hired him, you didn't, you didn't present the contract to him? There are no contracts with any town. That's an implied contract. So you've implied a contract already. It's in existence. You know, I don't have any problem with 
that being a contract and that it specify duties. It's just that one has to allow some discretion when it's a volunteer department and his and the amount of money he's getting is so low. Because he just can't fulfill all of that. Isn't that the reason we are talking about writing up a contract? I'm sorry? I said, isn't that the reason we're talking about writing up a contract? Um, because we need to make up our own minds, and he needs to make up his mind what is reasonable and what is not. Isn't the contract set forward by no, town meeting? No question. I noticed that the contract that was given as a, as a sample has sixty thousand dollars written in rather than fifteen hundred. And maybe he would say sixty thousand for sixty thousand. Yeah, I'll do all that. Excuse me, but we're not negotiating a contract right no, now. We're all not. we're doing is deciding that uh, whether we're going to the council we have contracts for both. Um, fire chief and police chief, and that will be negotiated at a later time. Okay, I agree. I agree that. So then you can voice your opinion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. May I move that we um, that we draft the contract for each of our chiefs yes. and negotiate with them in the future. Are you seconding? Um, I'm sorry? Are you seconding? Yeah, I'll second. Any further discussion? I think the board's already under a contractual obligation that you that you can change with agreement and consent of all the parties. Well, we have consulted with our council, and this was his recommendation. Okay. And I assume so what he's saying is you guys ought to have a written contract. Yes, yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Chapter 9 of project for a new loader request. If you look at the previous meeting minutes under item 8, actually just above item 9, um, the only thing I managed to capture correctly was uh, relative costs, but it was way out. I said that the trading, the cost of this new loader after trade-in would be seventy thousand dollars, and we currently have one hundred and fifty-three thousand. While in fact we have three hundred and thirty thousand, and the trade-in cost after, but the loader costs more. So we're looking at $160,000 trade-in of $35,000, so a total cost of $125,000, actually $125,100, another $1,100 for a two-way radio. Chapter 90 balance is, he guessed at $341, yeah, and we've actually got another $20, so we've got $360, not $153. A mere two hundred thousand. Um, the cost of this project will be one sixty less thirty five trade in. Um, everything else I said, and just in terms of this is a great trade in price, um, and it's it's time to upgrade this equipment before it's a broken hunk of metal. Um, I stand with so I'm looking for authorization of a chapter ninety project in the amount of 126200 That would be radio and new John Deere loader and trade in the old one. And the 350 price that you referred to is what? That's how much money we have in that grant. Uh. I, I had estimated it at 150 but that's because I didn't just pick up the latest award. So do we need to make a motion? If we would, I can get Larry going on the paperwork and we can get signatures and, and file this with the state see if we can get approval. Okay, so in, in a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Next steps for green communities. So, I met with building an energy committee today. Um, this is consistent with the application we made for designation, but our first batch of projects are proposed to be wind certs, these plastic double interior storm windows, which are done at quite low cost for all town buildings, that is fire, police, library, town hall. Uh, upgrades to security lighting at the fire and police department uh, going to most likely LED lighting. Internet programmable thermostats where appropriate. We still have some work to do to figure out how many zones we need to future proof us for, but actually have the ability to um, be home on a Monday when uh, it's a holiday and the programmable thermostat's currently set to kick up to 65 degrees at 9 o'clock because that's when business normally starts on Monday morning and say nobody's here and tell it to stay at 50. Weather sealing, police, library, and town hall, Weather, which basically means air, air sealing and possibly additional insulation. Air source heat pump at the police department. It currently has electric baseboard resistance heating, which means that one, one um, unit of energy in gets turned into almost in, in an electric baseboard, almost a unit of heat out, but the air source heat pump we would replace it with is three, three and a half times more efficient, also provides uh, cooling. We already have appropriated money for the highway equipment barn, but the committee would like us to look at that. And we've identified some uh, electrical issues at the transfer station that are costing us power, and I've assured the committee that, that we can Take care, we will take care of that, but it doesn't have to be done um, under the green communities. And there's a request from the Board of Health that we look at the appliances in the kitchen. Um, but the kitchen is used so little, and there's not much of a case to be made for um, a more efficient electric range. There, propane in the town hall has been a uh, contentious issue in the past. And it's hard to argue that a new refrigerator will use less electricity than the one we have now, which is turned off 95% of the time. But we'll look into those things. So, wind certs, security lighting, web uh, Wi-Fi thermostats, the big deal about $70,000 worth weather sealing and insulation, heat pump at police department. I think my deadline for submitting this stuff is the 14th of this month, but most of the work's done. It's our, basically, it's regurgitating what we already put in. What are the costs now of A, LED lighting, and B, heat pumps? You mean like relative to the past, or? Uh, um, relative to other... Um, forms of lighting and heat. I well, would I would expect LED lighting is still really expensive, but maybe I'm wrong, it's coming down. Well, if, in the case, for instance, where, there, where there's uh, fluorescent tubes like this and the ballasts are fairly mod uh, uh -huh. modern and, there's, and they don't get used very much, yeah, the calculation says you can't afford to amortize the expensive LED lighting. But when you've got out outdoor lighting that is on all the time when it's dark, um, it, it makes sense. So definitely a function of use. Um, and on the air source heat pump, we're looking at having the tech school do the installation. So it's wow. simply a matter of, of getting it 
right size and and install and, and there's not a lot of difference in the cost of the units um, because they pretty much all use the same compressor, big or small, they just run them harder. Um, but it is important with heat and cooling systems that you correctly size them. So the first thing we, we do is uh, air seal and make the building as efficient as possible mm -hmm. um, and then size them. Patricia, did you have a comment? No, it's fine. Yes, sir. Um, I misunderstood. Uh, maybe I misunderstand. I was asking to begin with, but then I realized what he was saying. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, I thought this new safety building was supposed to include the police department. Am I wrong? It will. It will eventually. So why are we, you're going to start that next year, right? Yes. So why are we doing anything to the police department now? Well, the police department isn't moving right in because these, the police department's already had a lot of upgrades for, for them to be up to code. So they're going to use, utilize that for a while. Um, the station itself is going to be put up only to house the um, fire engines, the, all the apparatus, because um, that's all the money we have to do right now is is to be able to put the apparatus away. So the the offices are, are an addition which we're going to keep raising money mm -hmm. for, and, and eventually they'll so we we'll all be moving in there. So we don't know if we're talking a two-year period, five-year period. Or we just don't know. we got to raise the money, so donations help. <laughs> you know, I mean, as soon as we can, obviously, but... We're starting out with a shell in a garage. Can I ask right. one more question? No. Your volunteer fire department, is this going to be a municipal building? Yes. So the town will own it? Eventually, yes, when, if they when it's turned. If they decide to so the, accept it. Well, that's where I'm confused. I don't know. Right now, we're. I don't know if the town owns it. Or no, right, right now, the association owns, owns it. it. We're putting all the money into it ourselves mm -hmm. and, and getting it built. Um, once it's all fully functional, then we will give the town an option to take it over. <coughs> By buying it or just take no, it just over? they'll just okay. take it over. Right. Thank you. Reg <coughs> regarding LED light bulbs, uh, uh, compact fluorescent uses about a third right. of the energy of our incandescent yeah. bulb, and a uh, LED about a fifth. And the prices of LEDs have come down significantly in the last year. And if you buy them on sale, they're, they're, they're not the, like they were before. So uh, we know we've switched over our, all of our heavy duty lighting at home, and we've noticed a significant lowering in our electric bill. And I'd say the payback period is pretty quick. Thank you. I would also say that if you buy it in bulk, you're going to find a huge um, cost savings too. And um, I'm a fan of LEDs; they're fantastic. It just gives a better light. One other thing, uh, thank you, uh, and that is uh, an LED is is a brighter light for some reason compared to a compact fluorescent. So. If you, where we had 40 watt sort of night lights and stuff, we're now down to 10 or 20 or 5 watt LEDs. The difference is quite remarkable. We replaced a 300 watt bulb compact for us with 150 <coughs> LEDs. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just bought my first two LED lights at Avishan this weekend. And they 60 watt replacement. I don't know what they took. Used up like eight Eleven. watts. Yeah, something yeah. like that. It was a two dollar and fifty cent instant discount. So the bulb cost eleven bucks. I put them in two places where I had CFs, where the light just wasn't adequate. It made all the difference in the world. <clears throat> a couple of months ago, the tech school approached me about relighting. The Warwick Community School, and 
the cost of the fixtures and such was $2,900 to do the entire school. Um, first time I went over there, I didn't think the lights were on because there's no wasted light going up into the sky. But we calculated that it would take three years to pay the $2,900 back. So I went to the school district and said, let's split the cost. Oh, we don't know if we can afford that. So well, you're going to spend 500 of it just on electricity. Apply that to it. They thought about it a while, and yes, and we did the deal. And, and there's not all this light pollution to the sky, and you get in the parking lot, and it's well lit. LEDs are nice. great. Mm -hmm. And it was an object lesson for the school district in performance contracting. A little <laughs> tiny one, but one just the same. Good. Okay, reports for the FY14 town report and FY16 budget process. Um, we've got a long ways to go on the town reports. Um, this year my plan is, and the reason it's on the agenda, is it's not a statutory uh, requirement for a report, and I don't get it, I'm not going to kill myself this year. The town report could be kind of thin. And uh, thing two is, it is time for, the, for us to get going on next year's budget. Town meeting is not that far away. Yeah. That's it. I'd like to see the people who came to this meeting invited specifically to the uh, Finance Committee probably and, and our meeting to the extent that we're doing stuff on the budget. I'll do that. Okay, select board reports. Nick. Um, okay. The easy one is the request to reconsider it. reorganization. Um, seems like it should have been put at the beginning of the meeting instead of the end, but here it is. Uh, um, I agree with your decision. And that is that. So, no need to reconsider. Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. um, the clarification of the Wired West resolution. Let me get the resolution, which I think is quoted in the draft minute. It's also the last page yeah. of the court cabinet. Okay, well, I'm looking at it at number three in the. Um, okay. in Um, let's see how to do this quickly. Um, I have a whole lot wrong with it. Um, I talked with Ted about it until he said, hey, I've had enough of this, I'm getting out of here. Uh, and he agreed about one item of the items I had on this. And the one item was uh, the next to last sentence in the resolution, which starts, further we acknowledge the business model. And the basic problem with that is that it says the town of Warwick may ultimately be responsible for its share of network operating costs. It seems to me the operating costs belong with the uh, um, the customers and don't belong with the town at all. And uh, if that sentence were um, rewritten simply to take the word operating and change it to capital, I don't think there'd be a problem. Uh, I think um, while Wired West will say there's a great deal of a problem just to make that change. But I think it's necessary. And 
are removing it? Um, you know, if I were to make a motion, it would be, I mean, the answer is yes, but the motion I would rather make is uh, to not, to deny the uh, resolution altogether. And that's because we ought to fish or cut bait at some point. $2.5 million is way, way up there. It's $10,000 per household. And how many people spend $10,000 on an internet service? You can get a whole lot for that. And also, it is a 20-year, uh, it's a 20-year item, and it's very likely that way before the 20 years is up, people are going to discover there's something better than uh, fiber optics. It's cheaper than fiber optics, and they'll give up some contracts and we'll be left holding the bag on the geo bond. So I think it's a bad thing all from the get-go. Right. But assuming you guys, let's do it this way. I make a motion to simply deny their resolution and I make an alternative motion if you guys... You can't No, do that. one at a time, Nick. I'm sorry? You cannot do that because we are the ones who proposed it and voted it and you weren't even here. Um, we are the only ones who can rescind the vote. Uh, well, it's a motion for reconsideration and you can allow yeah, whatever sure. you can want just, to be reconsidered. Could you permit just a general discussion of information before any motions yes. are considered? Yes. Is that would be okay, Nick? I think it saves, uh, it saves a whole lot of going around and circles because one of the things I could do is I could go through this whole resolution and say well my point one is this and my point two is this and my point three is blah 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 and I've got about ten points and the alternative is to simply move a change in the next next to last sentence from operating to capital and that you reconsider the motion. The reconsider Nick, my the request is that we just have a general set. discussion here to provide you some context before any motions are considered. Um, Pat, you were suggesting this is a motion. Do you want him to do that or not? Um, I was just asking what you were planning to do. And I'm perfectly happy to have a discussion rather than a motion. I think it's too soon to have a motion if we do one. I think we should wait until next meeting anyway so that we've had time to digest whatever has been, is said here tonight. Um, well, I wonder whether I should give my ten points or my one point. I would really like to see your ten points in writing. Is that um, something you could do? Yeah, I can do that. Oh, that would be I went through cool. it with Ted this afternoon and I can easily do it again. Well, then please do. Is that all right if you don't? Sure. Okay. All right, so the point I want to make is that the resolution is what is being required by MBI of us in order for them to proceed to spend bond money on furthering this proposal, which does not have a very sophisticated working operating model. And there's those of us who went to, I think there were six people from Warwick, went to the finance meeting on, on the Wired West proposal at FERCOG last month. And afterwards, MBI's general counsel came up to me and said, is this is this the meeting you expected? I said, absolutely not. But it was, I think, the right meeting for those assembled here. I'm looking for a working model where 
the assumptions are identified, and the sensitivity of various variables can be tested. What happens if you move the price up $3 or down $3? What happens if you change the number? They said, oh, well, nothing like that exists yet, which means that, which means to me that, that all these representations of the break-even points at 53% or whatever are hogwash. Yeah. So what we're trying to get is some some numbers that are more than boosterism. Because right now, that's what they are. They're boosterism. This kind of scary language that was voted is what is being required by bond council financing this project's 110, they say 100 to 119 million. I see 120 million all day long. But the, bond, the, the state bond money is just 40 of 120. They've got to go to public bond market and get two-thirds of the money to make this happen. And that assumes that every one of the 45 towns is going to say yes. If you change this resolution, you might as well say no. But the effect of voting for this now is not to commit the town to spending any money. It is to give MBI political cover to spend some of that bond money to keep going down this road. So, uh, my problem is that it in <coughs> fact commits the money Permits the town to pay for operating expenses. You when don't we... understand the power of a select board if you believe that, Nick. It is not within your power sitting there at this table to commit the town to, to this. It is not. The things that have to happen in order for that to be committed are the town meeting has to vote by two-thirds to, to authorize borrowing. And I believe the select board will be wise enough to craft that town meeting vote subject to an override vote, which would then mean that all of our friends, the taxpayers who are here tonight, have a chance to, under secret ballot, say yay or nay to putting the tax money on the line. I 100% agree with you. This project ought to resolve itself. This project ought to pay for itself, like Warwick Broadband has. But they cannot get the financing unless the deep pockets, just as Warwick Broadband couldn't get the financing to do its thing without the town committing itself to standing behind it and picking up the pieces, this project isn't going to go anywhere. Well, I'm afraid that the town is going to continue to say essentially the things that are saying said at the end of number three, at the time of the town meeting, and that the result will be that the voters will vote for the 2.5 million because they have been told, oh my God, our property taxes are going to go up and our property values are going to go down and this is terrible uh, because they're, they'll be given that scare tactic. and. We can't risk that. That's Nick, my view. don't you feel you can speak to this at town meeting? Um, oh, that Nick, he's always objecting to everything. I don't know what the result would be, so I want to get it done now. So you want to be sure to cut off the citizens of the town from making their own decision, is that it? Um, the because you think you know better. No. What I think is that this resolution commits the town to more than just putting the bond issue before the voters. I think you're wrong. It doesn't commit, but it does leave well, the door open. Well, you wanted to see my ten points. I'll show you my ten yeah, points, please, and then I, maybe you'll I, see. Let, let right. me see the ten points before we do any more discussion. Madam okay. Chairman, to, I believe your discussion is starting to bog down a little bit. Uh, I would like to. Uh, agree with the uh, suggestion of laying the points out. I would also like you to add uh, a deadline for getting these comments so they could be distributed to the broadband committee and to the finance committee so they could make their comments also for what they're worth. 
uh, than maybe other interested parties. But the uh, it is a town-wide issue, and uh, there may be some uh, subtle aspects here that the Broadband Committee could bring forward that Nick's not aware of, and the Finance Committee has some knowledge. Um, I'll commit to having my ten points before the next meeting of this No. no. It has to be more sooner than that so that the other boards could... I, I don't mean to... But pardon me. Yeah. Um, my suggestion would be a faster time frame so that it could be distributed to the other boards so they could make comments back and you'd have a package of comments by your next board meeting or the meeting after or whatever. What would you the suggest as a timeline? It's not that easy to, to do. Well, I, I, I don't know, but if you make your timeline at the next meeting, that doesn't give anyone else <coughs> a chance to comment of the interest of well, You and I spent 45 minutes on this earlier today, and so you have an idea how much time it ought to take me to put that in. On paper, I, what would you suggest? To what I suggest time? is that the that the select board are the town fathers. <coughs> they look, although they're women, I don't know. It's all very confusing to me. But they look uh, down the line and take the accepted guidance from those of us that serve the town. And I would take the broadband committee might have something to say about this issue. And I think the Finance Committee might have something to say right. about and it. And the board might say, having Can gotten it from me in, in two weeks, we need another two weeks for everybody else to comment on it. Somebody give me a timeline. This timeline that's being by. discussed is absolutely ridiculous. The huh? points that have to follow. In December, the select board needs to vote this resolution. Otherwise, Warwick is out of the picture, not in the running. In Next, what? the fun in when December we, we met. We met. We met that deadline. MBI is now spending money on on developing a real model. Town meeting is the next hard and fast date, May fourth, and the publication date is seven days prior. Between now and then, the broadband committee, finance committee, and select board need to meet on this. But there isn't any new information that's accurate. I would have to join you in saying, no, this is a stinking bad idea, Nick, based with the information we have now. We need to let MBI do several months worth of very serious, very intricate financial modeling to figure out whether they've got anything going here. There's not this kind of a timeline. And we do have a broadband committee to refer this to, but getting this thing done before the next meeting is ridiculous. Um, are people suggesting that I should do nothing whatsoever, or are they suggesting that I should do this quickly, in which case, when? What I just I'm want a timeline. What I'm suggesting is that if you've already discussed this with Ted, and you have it firmly enough in your mind to know that you have 10 points, you should be able to sit down and do this tonight or tomorrow afternoon and send it to us. Um, if that's and what you're asking for, I'll have 12 do. Okay, and select board members, Nick can express his opinions. Do not respond to them by email. Do not make any response by email. That would be serial deliberation. It is entirely fine for Nick to write the Magna Carta on the subject, but do not then engage in any email back and forth. I think that what Nick needs to do is send that to you so that you can then include it in our package for next meeting. Absolutely. Maybe. Nick, these well, are my... But you have to consider it before your package for the next meeting. Yeah, but we'll get the package problems. for the next meeting in a week and a half, and he can also send it directly to the um, Finance Committee and the Broadband Committee. Well, okay, I'm committing to giving David my 10 points, and I hope you, too, will receive them from David untouched. Uh, I will not molest them. <laughs> you will not, not molest them, and I will do this by tomorrow, 5 p.m. Excellent. Thank you, Nick. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know how big a speech you can have, but we will...
We still have a number of cupcakes here. It's true. Only two, two got, only two got eaten in the back of the room. What's wrong with the back of the room? You still have the coordinator report? Ah, oh, oh, I don't want to die. Let me see if I can remember anything. Nick, this was, this was my amendment. I obviously got it wrong. I, um, I, I just want to make sure the board uh, understands mm -hmm. the uh, where we are on the wagon wheel zoning enforcement, which is being appealed by the campground. Um, we were heard in Superior Court in the first half of December, and the judge ruled from the bench that we're not going to be subject to attorney fees. And then the judge forced opposing counsel to admit that their, their other um, count, yeah, count, they have two counts. One was, uh, we're not subject to this zoning. And the second, the other count was, this is bad zoning. And that's, Superior Court is not the place to take a claim that this zoning is not good stuff. You take that to the land court and the judge forced opposing counsel to admit as much. So we have not seen from the judge anything in writing, but we were there and these two things happened. So now what we're working on is discovery. And I'm convening a little think tank of, uh, of folks who will be looking at uh, discovery of existing documents and perhaps some interrogatories and we're gonna I expect stay away from depositions as best we can because that gets a chance. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, any new or other items? Not previously. I would just like to say that the um, the road crew and the fire department have done a wonderful job during this weather. I agree. And I think they should pat themselves on the back. I agree because there is a point on Kirk Road where to be able to see the traffic coming from both directions, you have to sit on a very steep spot. And ordinarily there is ice on that steep spot, so you pause and you slide backwards and can no longer see out. And you have to try it again and again and again. And eventually you say, I'm never coming here again. <laughs> but okay. not this year, it's well sanded. They've been doing a good job. Yeah. yeah I, I thought of one more thing. Um, we have begun instituting internet phones, fiber-based phones here at the town hall, and um, boy has it been a lot of fun. Um, our our in-house phone guy, Terry Kemmerer, has stepped up, and um, at this point I think he knows more about the private branch exchange than our vendor. Um, it, it turns out that with a an IP phone line, you can actually, standard issue, you actually have three phone lines. So if you have more extensions with, with one phone number, three, four, six, three, one, five, you can actually make three phone calls out on one line. At the same time. At the same time. And the first handset, well, the first handset we, I bought on eBay and it was a uh, conference phone. It looks kind of like the conference phone in front of Paul there. Only it wasn't, and I managed to almost set it on fire, um, and then got another one that, that works. So we now have a nice working conference phone, and we now know that one of these Cisco base stations can handle eight phone lines and 24 extensions. Well, we have two of these phone lines, and we're trying to spoon feed our vendor on how to set it up. Unfortunately, a lot of it happens this side, uh, but we are using the fiber optics here at the town hall. And, and we've converted three of six lines. The, our fire and smoke system board is plain old copper telephone wire, wires, so we can't change that. And our elevator line is the same technology, and I don't think we can change that. 
the cost of one uh, phone line on this system is twelve dollars and ninety five cents a month and two point nine cents a minute doesn't matter if it's local or long distance it's two point nine cents a minute anywhere in the country um, and we figure we need to do about 700 minutes of calls per line in order to hit the level where we should say the heck with measured service and go to an all-you-can-eat line at 20 something dollars. So we're going to end up saving some money out of this thing. And the, the call quality is, is much better. Uh, the transition is far from complete. If you pick up a 544 phone number and call the select board, you will go to the old analog phone system. If you take my cell phone sitting here in this building, it's not a 544 number and call, it'll go to the digital system. Eventually, the old Verizon system is going to go away, but those phones are still ringing depending on from where you're calling. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.